Hey there, Touch Designer Developers. Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to create this fun feedback effect that incorporates one of the newer texture operators added to the program, which is the Bloom Top. We're going to use the Bloom Top in two different places in this effect and uh, build something that is kind of fun, a little bit different, and definitely a great tool for experimentation in today's video. So stick around, we're going to jump right into it. All right, so we're going to start off with a blank network. And the first thing that we're going to add today is a noise top. This is gonna be used to provide the input texture for this uh, feedback effect. Although, although we're going to um, also make a couple of modifications before we get there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to come over to the common page and set the resolution here to 1024 by 1024. Then I'm gonna come down to the pixel format and set this to 16-bit float RGBA. We're gonna need this higher pixel format uh, bit depth just to make the movement a little bit more interesting and not uh, limit ourselves to the fixed um, pixel format, which only will output between a range of zero and one in the RGBA channels. Then I'm gonna come right back to the noise page where I'm going to turn the monochrome switch here to off, which is going to output some nice and colorful noise for us. Next up, I'm gonna head to the transform page where I'm going to add in an expression for the translate Z parameter. I'm gonna type in, after clicking on the parameters title, ABS capital T time dot seconds and multiply that by 0.1. That'll get our noise moving a little bit. And I'm going to follow that up with a number of operators to kind of adjust the output a little bit. I'm going to add first a level top, place that to the right. And this is going to be used to just attenuate the brightness a little bit. I'm going to set this to a value of 0 0.6, which again is gonna kind of dim the image a little bit. Then I'm gonna add a limit top. And I'm going to use the limit top to add a sort of pixelated blocky effect to this texture. So I'm gonna to come to the quantize page and then I'm going to set the quantize value first to uh, floor and set the value step here to 0 0.3, which is going to give us a sort of posterization effect. And then I'm gonna to come to quantize position and set this to ceiling. And that's gonna give us this very blocky pixelated uh, version of what's coming in the input. Now it looks a little bit boring as is and kind of loses a lot of what's going on here, but we can actually use the bloom top now to make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to attach the bloom top by right clicking on the output and adding the bloom top in here. And we're then going to make some adjustments. So I'm gonna start off by setting the pre-black level at the top to 0.45. You'll see that that has already shifted things around a little bit in our signal and we're starting to see bloom appearing on some of the brighter areas of the input image. Then we're gonna come down to pre-gamma and set this to 0.5. Again, that's had the effect of kind of brightening things up a little bit more in the image. Then I'm gonna come down to minimum bloom radius, and I'm gonna reduce this value significantly to 0 0.05. Uh, you'll see then that the, the kind of radius around the different blocks that uh, have the bloom effect applied to them is reduced. After that, we're going to set the bloom threshold again to a lower value by setting this to 0 0.005 and hit enter. And there we go. We've again slightly attenuated things a little bit more. And finally, we're going to set this bloom intensity to 3.75. So really crank up the intensity of those bright areas of the image. Now, finally, instead of putting together the input and the bloom in a single image, I'm gonna change this output setting to just output the bloom by itself. And that's going to give us this interesting image that um, looks a little bit something like, 
I don't know, disco lights or traffic lights or something like that. And um, is what we're going to use as the input to our feedback effect. So with that in mind, I'm then going to add, oops, a null, which I'm going to call null input. This is going to be the input to our feedback loop. And then we can continue on by adding in uh, the different operators that we need to use to make the feedback function. So first of all, that's going to require us to add in a feedback top. With the feedback top, I like to also add in a keyboard in shop so that I can easily reset feedback at any point. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that now. And I'm going to leave all the settings in the keyboard in shop alone. However, I'm going to hit the viewer active switch in the bottom right. And then I will click and drag from the center of this operator onto my feedback top so that I can bring up the parameters over here. And then I will go ahead and move my mouse over to the reset switch and let go and make a chop reference. Then I should be able to hit the one key on the keyboard and reset the feedback whenever I want. So this is going to be an effect based on displacement. And that is one that's been covered in a number of videos for working with feedback effects can create all kinds of interesting uh, kind of warping, distorting effects when used in conjunction with feedback. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and add that in right now and place it over to the right. We're going to also need a, um, for the displacement effect, a displace image coming in the second input, which is what's going to control how the displacement is going to be applied. So what I'm going to do in this case is to use a bloom top again. And that's going to be first connected to the feedback. And then the output of this will be connected to that second input of the displace top. Now this is going to have somewhat similar settings to what we had uh, set up over here, maybe a little bit different um, in some cases, but relatively similar. Uh, we're going to come back up to the top, set our um, pre-black level to 0 0.45, set our pre-gamma to 1.5, um, set our minimum bloom radius to 0 0.05, set our bloom threshold to 0 0.005, and our bloom fill to 0 0.6. And finally, our bloom intensity to 3.75. Like our previous uh, instance of the bloom top, I'm also going to set the output here to just output the bloom instead of compositing it with the input. And now that we've got that operator set up, let's continue on to our displace top. All I'm going to change here is to set the displace weight from a value of one for each of the vertical and horizontal directions to 0 0.001. And then I'm going to set the extend mode here to repeat. Now we can start to connect all of this together and see what our output looks like. So I've gone ahead and connected the feedback top to the first input, which is the source image. That's going to be what we actually apply the, the displacement to. Then I'm going to add a null. So we can always add some additional processing if we want to. And finally, we'll finish out this feedback loop with a composite top. Now the composite top is going to be used to bring in a little bit of this input signal and composite it with what is happening in our feedback loop. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add in an additional operator here to kind of attenuate that output so we can layer it on top of our feedback. We're going to use a level top for that. And I will add that right below the feedback top. Now I'm going to connect the null input to this level top. And then I'm going to set the opacity here to 0.01. 
which is going to give us just a very, very small amount of that signal, which we can then composite over top of our feedback portion of the network. So I'm actually going to connect this level top to the composite. And then in the composite, I'm going to switch the order of these two inputs because I want actually this level top to be composited over top of the endpoint that is the null one of our feedback loop. So I'll come over here to the parameter window. I'm going to click this little teal arrow to switch the input order. And now we'll see we, we actually get a little bit of this signal coming through in our composite. Before we move on, I'm going to set the operation here to over so that we can, again, take this attenuated signal and place it over top of the feedback signal. And then finally, I'm going to click on the feedback top over here on the left and drag my composite one onto the target top parameter. That's going to get our feedback loop functioning and start generating feedback. And so at this point, I'm going to add a null after the composite and we can take a look at what we have generated. So we've got pretty much the exact same thing we had at the beginning of the video where we get this very cool liquid effect uh, because of the fact that we're using the bloom in conjunction with this sort of light like disco dance floor style texture, adding the bloom to that and then displacing the texture in the feedback loop gives us this really drippy liquid like effect, which is really cool. Um, one other area that we can continue to modify this a little bit and to push it further is in between the feedback top and the displace top. We have our source image, which is not being really processed in any other way other than to have displacement applied to it. And we're going to add now an edge top to, again, further process that signal. So I'm going to right click on this connection between the feedback and the first input of the displace top and hit insert operator. I'm then going to hit the uh, edge top option in the upgrade dialog. Everything's going to go crazy for a minute, but that's okay. We're going to now make some changes. First, I'm going to set the composite over input switch to on, which will again, uh, start, start the process of uh, kind of fixing our signal and making things look a little bit better. Then I'm going to set the black level at the top to 0 0.4, which is going to further attenuate things. And now we can see that we're starting to generate this very interesting uh, kind of organic growth effect along with our displacement. Finally, I'm going to adjust the strength here to 0 0.5 which is going to reduce the amount of um, the edge effect that is being applied. And then I'm also going to adjust the sample step parameters so that these are set to a lower uh, value than one. I'm going to set these to 0 0.4, which is going to significantly kind of adjust the processing um, that's happening in the image. And if we take a look in the background, you can see now we don't always get that kind of organic growth effect. It only occurs in certain situations on the kind of edges of these liquid like swirls that are occurring in our feedback loop. And we can play around with the strength parameter if we want to increase the amount of growth that's occurring. So with this effect, we get a little bit of that interesting liquid like displacement uh, that we can have within feedback loops and at the same time take advantage of the organic growth uh, that can happen when we also apply the edge top within feedback. And finally, we get to take advantage of the new bloom top and look at how that can impact and make uh, potentially some interesting results occur within feedback loops. So I hope this has been an interesting one for you to put together. I highly recommend continuing uh, your exploration within the feedback loop. There's always tons of things that can be done to manipulate the signal and generate some 
unpredictable results. So with that, we're going to close out the video. Again, hope you enjoyed putting this one together. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video here on the Interactive and Immersive HQ. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.